Hi there, my name is Nahla, and I am one of the co-founders of Forza School. So Forza School is an initiative that was co-founded by Sharjah Art Foundation, Not Critic, which is uh, the project that Rania Ajashi initiated. And the idea behind Forza School was to really arm, tackle, and address the challenges that creatives have been facing in the UAE. And so all our tutors have been brought in to address very, very specific nuances around navigating a professional relationship, whether it's with institutions, independently working on projects, expanding one's practice, and with a particular response to what the situation has been like in the last couple of years, or even more so this year. Now we have with us today Munira Saya, who is an independent curator. Hi Munira, it's so good to have you with us. Munira has curated exhibitions such as the Cup and the Saucer at Warehouse 421, uh, the Creative Act, Gulf Now, and Bayan, and several other projects. And Munira, I would say that probably the most anchoring thing for you is the fact that you are working with emerging artists, you work independently, but both collaboratively with different institutions. And what we're looking forward to discussing with you today is the role you have been playing here in the UAE and particularly how you're navigating these different relationships and navigating your own practice as a curator. So please, Munira, go ahead and feel free to start. For those of you who are attending right now, please feel free to jot in your questions in the Q&A section, and Munira will be addressing them at the end of her talk. All right, Super. Munira, so welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm very excited to be giving this talk. Um, as Nahla was saying, I'm looking at uh, my practice, understanding my practice and, and, and how that begins to understand like, uh, or explain what curatorial practices are uh, from uh, um, this sort of uh, uh, groundwork that I've done. Um, I, prior to this, I was speaking to Nahda and I was saying, I was saying that it's uh, very important for me to say that you know, my, everything that I know has been, I, I've learned on the ground, I'm self-taught when it comes to curatorial practices. And I think, you know, understanding what critical practices are and in the intersection of curatorial practices is very interesting and very important to kind of create the dialogue that I think is necessary um, within, the, within the art scene. Um, so yeah, let's begin. Uh, the first slide kind of walks us through the trajectory of me uh, finding uh, my niche in curatorial practice. Um, and I'd like to kind of backtrack and begin from uh, how things started for me. Um, my first exhibition was Bain um, in, uh, at Warehouse 421. Uh, and uh, I worked with UAE Unlimited to, to commission um, artists and work on a commission-based uh, exhibition. And that to me became very interesting. And I was commissioned and the artists were commissioned to kind of, you know, you're equalized and you're, you become on the same boat. And as an emerging curator working with emerging artists, it was very interesting for me to learn how to navigate that water between, you know, in, the waters between the institution and sort of this independent, uh, independent thinking and working. Um, and, and where and how you mitigate, mitigate between these two, uh, these two things. So my first step started out like that. And at the same time, I was still working um, with the Guggenheim of Rabi, um, BCT. And uh, while my exhibition was, uh, uh, as, as soon as it opened a few weeks later, I had opened my first institutional show, um, which was with the, uh, uh, with the Guggenheim of Rabi, at Minal Tzadiyat, where I learned, you know, I started to see what the difference is between working independently and working institutionally. And that really began to uh, um, dictate the way that I thought or dictate what I wanted or what I thought was uh, essential for me and what I could bring into the landscape of the arts. Um, and I realized quickly that, you know, independent thought uh, allows you to choose and pick the subjects that matter to you and kind of you can really begin to reflect that alongside with um, um, what's being spoken on a, on a broader sense or a broader scale. 
And it really made me think about the importance of, of grassroots initiatives, things that are more organic uh, uh, and how that then kind of generates the conversation that you need. Um, so I quickly made the decision to uh, leave the institution and um, you know, kind of sit with these thoughts. And uh, um, I got invited to speak at uh, uh, Nukat in 2017 or 2018. Uh, and I kind of put my ideas together and I had, had just seen a show um, uh, in London and it was a, a Basquiat um, retrospective. And I was there, you know, and I was, I was very excited to go see this exhibition um, because of all of the hype around it. But I didn't realize what it was going to give me. Um, and what it gave me was this sort of aha moment or realization, which I then discussed uh, in the in the Nukat talk that, you know, while institutions are rising and while they're being created, it's very important to have sort of this counterbalance with what's going on organically. Um, and for artists to come together and really produce. Um, and, 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 it, and that conversation is not just artists, it's also curators, thinkers, writers, musicians, you know, the whole creative setup. Uh, and, uh, and you realize that, you know, Basquiat only got to that, you know, to that position or level within his work because of the rigor in the conversation, because of the rigor in the community and sort of like the, you know, the, the Hamas, the excitement, you know, that, that, uh, that there's that that we're like that they were on a brink of some sort of movement, you know, like a, a contemporary art movement. So in 2017, I, I realized like this is exactly what we need. We need the network, we need people to come together. Um, we need to kind of elevate the voice of what the UAE uh, is in uh, alongside its neighbors, alongside the Arab world, and then uh, and then alongside the global world. And what the institution started to do. Um, was it started the conversation the other way around. So we started globally and we started sort of very internationally and uh, um, it, especially thinking in mind with, you know, the, the UAE started with, you know, the pavilion uh, in, uh, in Venice and then things began to trickle down. So what that creates is it, it creates a, a sort of a Libra scale or, or a, a scale from, point, uh, from one point to the other or one extreme to the next. Um, and so I began to speak about this sort of importance and I started to question how I could fit um, to, to satisfy what I believe in, which is, you know, the grassroots initiatives, uh, the more organic uh, setup. Um, when I made that realization, uh, um, a, lo a lot happened in between uh, before um, this case study, which I will give you of the cup and the saucer. Um, of them was I, I, I uh, curated um, the talks program at Abu Dhabi Art, and I, I really made it clear that all of the speakers that are going to be here are players in the Gulf region, that we are elevating these voices, that it is very important for us to elevate these voices, not only elevate, but connect and collaborate, because without each other, you know, you don't have, um, you don't have much, you know, like it, it's like, it's, we are stronger together. Uh, and so, so this, uh, this kind of set me up um, to uh, to the point where I was giving uh, another talk at the RA in London, the Royal Academy, where um, Pablo, um, the creative director from Art Dubai, was there, and, and he really he really kind of uh, uh, it's it sat with him what I was saying, and I started the Now series, and the Now series look at non uh, through Art Dubai look at non uh, governmentally funded spaces. Nahla was. Uh, uh, one of my participants through Dr. Asfar in our first edition. Um, and, uh, uh, and I continue to kind of progress this idea that, you know, there is a lot going on on the ground. We just need to come together and, and collaborate and discuss. Um, and so well, one step at a time, uh, eventually I got to the point where uh, I, 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 I was looking at, you know, curation, uh, through art, through visual art, and, and maybe something that I need to dis discuss or disclaim is that, you know, you can curate anything at this point in, uh, in time in the world. Like uh, the term curate, uh, curator is also very loaded, but it's also very trendy. So it's like, you know, you can curate your, you know, your, your dinner table, you know, you can, um, you, you know, from, from that to curating an exhibition, to curating talks, uh, to curating programs. So, and I've, I've kind of, 
uh, uh, played around with all of that uh, curation. I come from an art history background, so it's very important that, that the conversation that's being had is always very important for me because this is these are the remains that are going to then define the history that we are currently living in um, or currently producing, let's say. Um, so the case study that I would like to uh, um, begin this sort of negotiation that I'm having uh, with all of you uh, with is uh, the Cup and the Saucer. The Cup and the Saucer uh, um, was an exhibition that opened up in March, uh, right before COVID got too serious. Uh, and um, we, uh, the, the way it started was it's a solo show with Hashim and Lemke, but it's also an exhibition where for the first time I felt like I was a collaborator and not just a curator. Uh, somebody who was working alongside the artist conceptually, uh, uh, thematically, uh, uh, um, even with the works visually, everything was run through us uh, and we worked together to make it happen. Um, and it was two years of work. Hashim and Lemke, you know, I had done a, a panel talk with him and he kind of disappeared out of nowhere, like, uh, and then reappeared out of nowhere. And he came up to me and he said, he was like, you know, I want to put together an exhibition. And I want it to be a solo and I want to work with you. Um, and so I began to understand, uh, uh, you know, this, I, I began to tackle this exhibition that had no space, that had no funding, uh, that had no concrete idea um, through, uh, through this experimentation that, that ended up with, uh, as the cup and the saucer. So, um, what uh, what ended up happening was we we met uh, religiously every Monday. Uh, these Monday meetings allowed us to kind of share our uh, um, sort of uh, our practices. Outside of being a curator, I'm also a writer, and uh, so I started. So Hashi started to show me a lot of his older work, and we started to realize that the themes and the thematics that are popping up are all works that are very uh, or all themes that are very much interchangeable or connected one way or another. So that's how the, the conversation began um, of the cup and the saucer. Um, well, I appreciate, Manira, what we were saying yesterday about this idea of allowing the ideas to take time and marinate a little bit. So the fact that it took two years, it could have taken longer, but also this idea that there have been these blurs between that relationship with Hashem. So you weren't coming in necessarily as a curator doing a service to the artist, but rather a collaborator, a friend, a companion uh, in his practice. So I feel that's something very important to highlight as well. And whether, was that your first time kind of working very closely with an artist? Yes, uh, I had never had that experience before. And uh, I, I would love to never have an experience where you know the curator comes in and it's a it's a service you know it's a it's a trade-off because what you get when you work with the artist is you you get to know your any your themes are not just yours they're also the artist's best you think about them in a particular way and what makes life interesting to begin with is this voice so having this discourse where you know you you are the thinker alongside another thinker, uh, alongside another collaborator. Um, we spoke a lot about how we didn't know where uh, the curation ends and where the artistic practice begins because those two lines for both of us were very much blurred um, and very much uh, uh, besides blurred, very much sort of like brought together you know we were at our best um when we were when we were together thinking together and uh and and you know this the the beginning of the exhibition took us to many places of them we you know were coachy uh, uh, and uh, uh, we experienced the biennial together and i began to realize that now i can i i know how to look uh, at spaces and places the way that passion does. I know what catches his eye. I know what inspires him and vice versa for Hashim. Um, and I think that that's very important. Um, and, and you know, this brings us to our second slide, which talks about the proximity with the artist. And, you know, I think we are, uh, we are at the brink now of this, like a plethora of artists in the region and in the UAE in particular. 
Um, and, uh, and it's important to tag team with somebody who can help you think, think things through, uh, critique you, um, work with you, and just kind of live alongside you. You know, you said that this exhibition could have taken more than two years. I feel like this exhibition hasn't finished because every time I see Hashim, it's a continuation of this discussion. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, and so so it's no longer work; it just becomes friendship. You know, as you said, uh, and uh, and I think that that's that's very that intention is very important. Um, that we don't have this sort of circus-like situation where things come in and they kind of create a, a lot of hype and a lot of sound, and then the exhibition closes and that's done, squared off and set aside, you know, then there's no continuity and that's very problematic. Um, and so, so, so yes, yeah, so the proximity of the artist, I think as soon as you, as soon as the, the two thinking partners, let's say fall in love uh, on, a, on a mental level, you know, you, you're kind of stuck, you're, you're, you're stuck and, and, and you continue the conversation, which I think is very healthy. Um, and and to, to begin to understand that an artist's trajectory is always borrowing from its past is also makes things very important for, you know, in this case, what has been labeled uh, of me as the curator, you know. Um, yeah. and, and so, so yeah, I think that's a, that's a valid and very important uh, realization. Uh, maybe I can pinpoint one example uh, at the bottom. Uh, at the bottom, this piece here, the it's a, it's a ten meter uh, uh, painting. And after returning from Barcelona, uh, both Hashan and I are very interested in surrealist thinking, surrealist writing, uh, and surrealist paintings. And so we did the Dali triangle, and Hashan came back super inspired, very charged, and he was like, "I'm gonna paint a ten meter painting." Um, and this, you know, ten meter painting. Uh, is is responding to the space of Bay 15. You can see there's like a um, like a little gap here because there's a uh, th there's a there's a dip in the architecture. Um, and Hashim took up all the space and he started. And then I, I returned after the summer and he was like, "I'm stuck. You know, this is massive. You know." And so the painting is the conversation that Hashim and I were having as he was painting. Um, and so, so this is this is something, or this is a work where I really feel that collaborative spirit uh, in. Um, and move on to the uh, move on to the themes. Uh, um, the the so so we realized that we had a lot of themes that we wanted to to focus on, um, but that they all kind of uh, relayed and uh, uh, responded back to a particular theme. So we created a, a main theme which is the cup and the saucer, which is the notion uh, of the, the cup and the saucer uh, coming together as a single uh, uh, item or identity, and then separating and having their individual identity. So we're talking about the collective identity versus the individual identity, and then the spectrum that is drawn between that uh, through the exhibition. Um, let me just move this here. Um, and uh, uh, so, so we realized that because this is such a big theme, we wanted to break it down and we wanted the intimacy of the Monday meetings to be carried through the exhibition. We wanted it to be felt. Uh, and that was very important for us. Um, so the sub themes, I'll quickly run through them. There's Birth and Earth, which starts the exhibition uh, and uh, looks at this notion of beginnings starts and the earth as a metaphor of something that it doesn't that, that doesn't end that's infinite and that is constantly uh, ongoing um, and then from from that we move on to versailles versailles looks at the the, the sort of uh, inherited understanding of what the highest form of being is um, and uh, uh, and then and then attending that to uh, uh, places of origin according to Hashi. Um, and how how those two things begin to mesh uh, into one. Then uh, and and so I, I generally I say that these are like halat and nefs or like the, the stages of the self. Uh, um, and uh, so so and then you begin to understand the individual versus the, the collective self. Um, and so so from there you you move on and you get to screensavers. Screensavers looks at this uh, uh, this notion of a sub reality. The notion of always being on your phone or arriving, for example, like with me, uh, uh, 
as I was saying when I used to work at BCT, I would arrive to my to my desk and my laptop, my computer would have this like wonderful space, you know, like at the sea, you know, and and here I am, my reality is so separate, so separate to that, uh, and and so what does that begin to to create when you have these uh, so the, the notion of duality, let's say, or let, let's leave it at that. Um, Rejection and Reflection looks at a, a series of works that uh, were rejected either by the artist or by an exhibition. Um, and uh, so, so Hashim readdressed those works to make them fit what has, what has been asked of them. So I, now we begin to realize that there is this tension when you, when you come as an individual into the collective space. Control and Guilt uh, talks about this sort of uh, uh, cyclical space uh, within the self where you know where you, where you feel when 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 you're when you're in control you don't feel guilty but then when you feel guilty you want to gain control and it's this constant negotiation and push and pull um, that is that is present within the self and is also present within the self communicating with the collective uh, um, community that is around you um, linger and departure is the big painting. Uh, I, this this sub theme is very dear to me, very uh, uh, um, kind of very special to me. I think it it really discusses a lot of what a lot of us go through, where um, you arrive into a place uh, only to kind of like linger and wonder what else is there somewhere else, uh, and then depart. But then as soon as you depart, you go back into that lingering. So, uh, so there's a lot of like cyclical ideas or, or, or feelings of push and pull in the exhibition and tension uh, within the exhibition that I like <clears throat> because these are things that are, you know, negotiations that you're already having with yourself. Um, and then uh, you have sprinkles and sprinkles uh, is, is where, is, is it maybe a, a point that, or something that I should highlight because Hashid was, uh, uh, this is like a sort of a curatorial realization where Hashid has, his, his work is very playful. Um, I think the whole experience with him it could be defined as playful very much. Um, and Sprinkles are a group of playful works that don't really fit any, uh, they, they, they don't fit the theme, you know, like in general, but they, uh, they're Sprinkles. They come in, they punctuate the space and the theme because the theme is so, there's a lot of seriousness and there's a lot of depth to it. Um, you need to have these moments of like, ah, you know, uh, just like just these these punctuate these punctuating moments that tie the exhibition around. You don't know why they're there, but they really visually take you through the exhibition. So we sprinkled them around. Uh, uh, um, we sprinkled them around the exhibition, and Hashin was like prior to us deciding where we we're going to place he was like what what should this sub theme be about i told him i was like let's just call it sprinkles because you know that yeah in the same way that like you came in and like sprinkled so much joy in my life you know like let us let the feeling and the the, the presence of the artist be there you know let the work dictate the space not other the other way around you know if if, a, if, an, if an artist has a really strong desire to show a particular set of uh, 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 works, then that is something that should be discussed and, and, and should be uh, experienced. Um, so, so the sprinkles, uh, uh, again, is, 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 are the works that, that you'll see that are super colorful, kind of scattered around the exhibition, leading you from the beginning all the way to the end. Um, yeah, there's something um, funny yesterday, which was uh, Faisal Hassan's reaction to your initial proposal. and the approach of looking at this as a retrospective when it was not necessarily a retrospective, but because Hashel has this abundance of works, it was really your job to kind of, yeah, ultimately think critically about them, but edit them down a lot slash compartmentalize where you could. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think so. So in the beginning, when we went to Faisal, uh, to ask him uh, to support us uh, through Warehouse 421 um, for this exhibition to exist there. Important because my first exhibition was there in Hashil also as a CIF graduate. Uh, you know, we went to him and, and I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do my curatorial job where I will put together works that already exist uh, and present them as a proposal, you know, with this overarching theme. There wasn't even the sub themes. 
Um, and Kesa looked at us and he was like, he's like, you know, you guys are in your 30s. Why are you proposing at, uh, you know, a retrospective? This makes no sense. Uh, and he was like, he's like, you know, Yanni, you guys are fresh and you, you, you're new on the scene and there's, there's a lot of interesting thoughts that you, you guys have. Why, why is this what's being presented? And we both were just like, like kind of mind blown and we panicked both at the same time. Like, so what does this mean? And what it meant was that we were going to create a super contemporary exhibition that Hashim's work, we have over a hundred works in the exhibition. I had to really cut down, really cut down, like, uh, you know, control and guilt alone. I had over like 200 uh, lamps uh, to look at uh, and to decide on. If you can imagine, and they're all like, they're, they're all beautiful, you know, it was, it, was, it was a very difficult editing process, but a necessary one because it brought us closer to the sub themes, why we're choosing every individual work. There's a reason behind every, every piece um, because of the editing process. Um, and, and of course, because of the, the initial sort of like uh, response from Faisal that, that led, led us to this point. Um, so, so yeah, so uh, uh, you, I don't know if you want me to continue or to, uh, if you have any other questions, Nahla, before I close up, uh, close up the sub themes. Um, we have two more. The, 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 sec the first one before the final one is First Glance, which uh, is looking at uh, um, the notion of intimacy, the notion of no disruption, the notion of privacy, and uh, and sort of the the the, uh, um, the understanding of being able to look at someone in a private space, be it yourself or somebody else. So th these works, unfortunately, due to COVID, were not weren't uh, you weren't able to experience them, but you were supposed to pick them up and they're view finders or view masters, and a lot of us had these from our childhood. And then the, the image uh, that you see, and there were three of them, were a series of uh, portraits. Um, and portraits in different places, but kind of attempting to arrive to uh, uh, the description of, of uh, uh, locations that are that Hashim is concerned with uh, as an artist or has lived in. Um, and then this brings us to the, the final uh, the final uh, sub theme, which is I think one of the most experimental ones, which is when Hashim came up to me in full force and full excitement. And he was like, Amira, I'm gonna curate a show in the exhibition. And I looked at him, I said, okay, I like this idea, but you know, tell me why. And he was like, he was like, it's very important for me that my work is also in dialogue with, an, with another set of works, but that those works are curated within their own theme. So, so, so Hashim became the curator for that space, but that space was within my space. So I had to uh, give, it a, give it a name that was relevant to me as the curator, to me as the curator looking at, looking at the whole space and also attending to it uh, um, thematically. So the way that I describe the space is that, you know, at the very end of the, um, at the very end of the exhibition, you get a, a palette cleanser uh, for your eyes, you know, and uh, and you look through a series of work that has been curated by the artist. Therefore, the theme is definitely very much interconnected, and it's about almost uh, about this notion of almost home. Again, you begin to see this see this tension that exists uh, across the entire exhibition, um, but. What Hashim does is he then takes it up to the next level and begins to ask the question and the role of language in understanding the notion of home. So when you say home in English is very different than you, when you say al wapan or uh, al bayt bil Arab, you know. And so, 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 what does that begin to uh, um, discuss? You go into this exhibition and you realize, and maybe more so now as I'm speaking to you, you realize that this exhibition is a response to his solo. Um, through his community, uh, looking at artists that uh, are emerging um, and uh, or or have made it already in um, in the scene, and also kind of changing the uh, uh, um, conversation of how to look at an artist or how to look at a work, um, and uh, and so that brings us to uh, to the end of uh, the the sort of the sub themes. 
Um, and I, initially in the beginning of, of the talk, I started uh, uh, seeding in this idea of criticality and critically reading and understanding. And I think that both Rachel and I, as, as, play, as playful as we are, we are also very critical and you need to know why you're being critical or what you're being critical of. And I think something that you begin to see um, in the exhibition is these responses to space, uh, is these responses to collaborations. Um, for example, uh, in the room Versailles, which had 51 paintings, uh, you know, we, we had to disrupt the, the flow of the room um, with, with the series of, of paintings, which are, which are IKEA frames uh, that have then been painted on top with white, uh, this, uh, uh, these maps of um, government housing in the UAE. Uh, and you know, and and to to place that alongside like a golf, a painted golf course in the realization of what uh, uh, you know that heightened state of being is starts to create this critical dialogue. Uh, starts to make you realize that that you know to look at things critically, you have to have various perspectives and various points uh, of departure. Um, and. Uh, um, and so, so yes, this uh, uh, brings me, I think, to the the final pre-final slide, um, which uh, which I will elaborate on a little bit more. And I, I think, you know, what made the the cup and the saucer special, and what made it uh, something that really kind of hit home for me, was the realization that the whole exhibition was created through the efforts of collaboration. Um, outside of the art, outside of Hashim and I, you know, we had, uh, uh, you know, Asha Havar make these uh, embroidered pins for everybody who participated in the exhibition. Um, we had, uh, uh, we had, uh, our opening got cancelled, and so Asha Havar, uh, Sheikha, and Roda Al Kitbi uh, have a, you know, have a space and a, and a gallery uh, or, or a warehouse space. Um, where we were just dropped a pin and we, we were asked to come to that space after the opening and we had an opening and it was an art party and I was like is this history you know like is this is this the moment that I've been discussing where everybody kind of comes together uh, collaborates and makes things happen when things are not happening to begin with. Um, and and so what you know what what these and and, and we, we had a lot of conversations with various artists and we constantly when we when we solidified these ideas we were constantly debating and conversing and and and, and critically thinking with others others who were a part of the community and you know we have um, we had uh, uh, four interns and a painting assistant. Uh, you know, and, and, and our interns, um, you know, Jacob continued to research, uh, Danny uh, started working with me on a full-time basis, and Noura uh, became somebody who uh, uh, we just constantly, uh, I, I still work with for one-on-one, she does all of our videos, we had Hissa, uh, who's, who continued to work uh, um, through her research, and then in uh, Mahajarallah, who not only was a part of the exhibition in the exhibition that Hashid curated, but is also uh, uh, an artist now uh, who's TAing TA for Afra Zahi. Uh, and it's so funny because all of these people were found through Beit 15. And it goes back to what I was discussing in the very beginning this notion of grassroots, this notion of network, this notion of coming together to come together stronger. Um, and and this uh, uh, this exhibition is definitely a testament uh, uh, to that, uh, and and is is something that I am very proud of, uh, very happy to have seen come to life, um, and uh, 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 because of this, because of the the element of community that came together, um, and yeah, this brings me to my final slide uh, that I would maybe like to open up um, to the uh, to the public. Uh, are there themes that you are interested in? If so, what are they? Whose work are you drawn to? If so, why? What conversations are you craving? And I want to enunciate the importance of this last question because without conversations, you don't you don't generate thoughts, and without these thoughts, you can't take the first step to create, uh, to instigate, and to continue and to further 
um, everything and all of the sort of the progression that's happening in the UAE in the present. Thank you. Thank you so much, Munira. Uh, we are inviting everybody to come and share their answers, any questions they have as well. And yeah, in the meantime, I have a few questions actually uh, that, that, that came up as we were speaking. So to, um, to consider now is, if you see this moment with Hashel as being a very um, pivoting moment, obviously very, very special to you because you chose to you know, and you revolve this entire presentation around the understanding of this exhibition. What are your rules now as a curator versus what you thought was expected of you as a young curator? Yes, uh, I think the term young curator is, is definitely a, a, a great one because you were, were constantly learning. What this taught me was that it's very important for you to, for you to seed your ideas into the institution, not vice versa, where uh, the institution uh, you know, approaches you and tells you, we want an exhibition on um, carpets, you know, uh, so put together an exhibition on carpets. Instead, you know, you, you, you come to the, you come to the institution with this notion of, uh, you know, uh, uh, identity politics, let's say, and you tell them you want to focus on this thing, because this thing is, is, is what is uh, being generated in conversations now. This is what's being uh, inst instigated between the communities. And, and you know, the exhibitions, I truly believe exhibitions should be a reflection of the present of the time that we are in. If we are looking at contemporary art, it should be contemporary. You know, it should be extremely relevant because the, you know, with my art historian hat on, uh, these exhibitions are what, what's gonna tell us in the future what was important or what conversations are being had, what is being formulated during that time. And, um, and, and, and this, so, so, so that kind of brings an honesty. Maybe I think about my, my passion too romantically, but it's, you know, I think that honesty is very necessary and that's what creates interesting exhibitions. Um, and so for me, I feel like at, uh, you know, at this point, the big learning curve for me uh, is, or, or were two things. One, that you can say no. Two is that you can also suggest, you know, what it is that you, uh, that what, what it is that you want um, and why you think that's important. So I think that, that was kind of my main takeaway from uh, the cup and the saucer. You know, Munira, that's, I mean, something that I've discussed with uh, participants of Pursa School, but even with myself personally, that has been one of the biggest challenges actually, like, coming into oneself and understanding that your ideas are valid and then being able to negotiate back um, as being something so important. And, you know, what, what advice would you have to somebody who's, who's just starting out, kind of uncertain, maybe lacking in a bit of confidence, but, you know, it's, again, it's like an, an awareness of how solid our ideas can be. But would you say, has there been a way of you presenting your ideas or um, giving yourself any, a little bit of motivation, negotiation skills that you would advise to somebody? Absolutely. I think what uh, maybe a starting point is to realize that there, there is uh, that collaboration is key. And to mm -hmm. collaborate, you have to hear your collaborator out, but that your collaborator also has to hear you out. Mm -hmm. And that there is no hierarchy between you and the collaborator because without you, the collaborator or the institution it will not have what it needs, you know? Um, and so, so to kind of always remind yourself uh, that, that you too are important, you know, uh, equally as important. If not, you know, I could argue uh, more important because you are the idea generator. You are the uh, uh, knowledge producer, you know, and, and, and that, is, that is something that I, uh, that I feel, that I remind myself that I'm very happy to, to, to share and extend with anybody who is in that position or in that boat. And to also know that with that come, you have your rights, you know, you have your rights to say, 
this doesn't suit me um, because X, Y, Z, and, and, uh, and you need to know why. Uh, and, 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 and you need to also be able to be present enough. And you know, I think the, the idea of being a young curator and also looking younger than I actually am is, is, a, is, a, is a, it's a double-edged sword and it's, it's not fair a lot of the times, you know, because people assume that you don't know much or that you don't really know what you want, you're just giving it a go. No, I know what I want and I know why I'm here, you know, and I think that that's a very important thing to have. Um, and uh, uh, because, because only then can you really negotiate and can you really be up to par um, with the institution that you're negotiating with. And I think, you know, we're very lucky to have young institutions like Warehouse 41 and Abawati, you know, where, you know, you're going and you're speaking to uh, not only a, a colleague and a peer, but also, a, you know, a friend uh, and the whole team that it's, that's at Warehouse 41 are people that I've known for the last, you know, 10, 10 years that I've been working. Um, and so, so, so I think that that, uh, that negotiation is, is important that you're, you know, you're, you're bringing your ideas to somebody else's house. That house has its rules. Um, how do you respect those rules? And this is, you know, I, I want to point this out as not being censorship, as just being something that is uh, 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 something that you need to navigate around and, and is something that actually adds to your exhibition, um, uh, you know, and, and adds to the conversation since you're already having a conversation this two-way conversation now became a three-way conversation with warehouse in the example of um the cup and the saucer and you know you also talked about this this idea of collaborating with people you know going back and you regularly working with um the 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 person who does your films to uh certain people in production to, to also having Danny as part of your team. He's also a participant in Fursa School, but I'd like to ask a little bit more about actually the importance of seeking help, delegating and hiring a team. Absolutely. And what that looks like, like what is your setup now? And what does Danny help you with? With my, with my love. <laughs> it's, uh, I think I realized this year that I have a lot on my plate and I'm one person, oh, it's the situation that I'm in, you know, um, and that there are things that I need to focus on and that I think in, in the spirit of collaboration, which is sort of like a base, uh, a base pillar for me in, in, in my, my being, uh, I realize that, you know, I now know, I know enough and I can share what I know with somebody. Um, and that I also need help and that I need to acknowledge that, that I, I, I work independently and I work out of my own space, uh, in my own living space, and that I don't have a formal uh, office and, you know, things aren't as grand as they, they, you may think they are, you know what I mean? But I ha I, you, know, you, have to, you, ha you have to have people that you're working with outside of the collaborators, somebody who's constantly there and constantly kind of keeping you on your toes, asking you the right questions, you know, working with Danny. Um, I've known Danny since he was a freshman at NYU and I've followed him since. Um, he interned with us at the Guggenheim and then it just kind of, we just kind of stayed in touch. And then I, re I learned that, you know, he was still in the UAE and he was still looking for a job and I need somebody to fill a job that you know, that, that, and that person is Danny, you know, and in, 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 in so many ways. And so when he came in, what I told him that I can, you know, extend was that, you know, you, you're going to get to know everybody that I know, you're going to be in all of the meetings that I take, uh, and it, there's full transparency, which I think is very important. I tell him about my mistakes as much as I tell him about my strengths. I let him make mistakes, uh, uh, which he doesn't make, but when, when, when and if he does, I'll get back to you guys. Uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, um, but also I, I urge him constantly to take projects outside of the projects that we have together. Mm -hmm. And whenever he does that, I will mentor him through the entire setup from start, from thought, from idea to the manifestation of this idea. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so, 
and for me, it's important that for, for everybody to know that, you know, the, the world has become accessible. Everybody's on Instagram. Drop somebody a line when you're confused, you know, um, and you'll be surprised to see that people are, are more than willing to help and more than willing to collaborate. And, and, and I think, the, I mean, Danny calls me his mentor and I feel like that's a huge responsibility um to, to to be a mentor to anyone and but but all i can do in that mentorship is be honest with him and tell him what i know and tell him what i don't you know um and and that those two things are equally as important and to also pinpoint how he is different to you you know nobody is really under your wing because if you if you keep somebody under your wing you just keep them there the idea is that you 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 show them the steps and you watch them fly you know, and then and then you participate along alongside that, if you know, any, uh, um, throughout their their trajectory and their career. Um, but yeah, yeah. That, I think that answers the question. Yeah, definitely. Thank you, Achi. To add to that question, we have Salem AQ from the audience asking you in the UAE's art scene today. How how has being a curator evolved, and how busy are you? <laughs> Um, so I, uh, I think curation has evolved, uh, in the last 10 years, a, a lot at a fast pace. I first saw curation very much as a management role, uh, where, you know, you're coming and you're sticking things off of a to-do list and, um, you're, you're, you're managing the artists, you're managing the space. Um, and there, that for me was confusing because for me as a, as a, as a person who's very like you know, emotionally inclined, I like to feel things as opposed to manage things. Um, and slowly I began to see that change. Uh, and, uh, but also something that I'm slowly starting to see change is we had a lot of parachuting curators. Um, and, uh, and, and that's something that I'm, I'm hoping will come to an end eventually where, you know, you have parachuting curators and, and parachuting researchers who come in and, you know, they study the Emirates for like three minutes, take a look and then go back to their respected homes, uh, write about us uh, as, as though like lab rats, you know, uh, and, and their findings. And it's so detached and it's so devoid from the reality and the truth of the matter. Um, and so I think the, the transition or the change that I'm seeing is that I'm seeing more curators on the ground, more curators coming together, collaborating. Um, there's, there's more sort of like uh, honesty in the work. There's more uh, uh, reflection of the place that we're in. And I feel like that, that is the biggest change that I've seen um, in the last 10 years that I've, uh, since I've been home yet. Yeah. Uh, and how busy I am. I'm looking forward to today ending because after today ends, I'm much less busy. <laughs> Good. Good. So you're taking a bit of uh, time off as well. A little bit of a break. Amazing. Well, Manira, thank you so much for this. It was yeah. lovely, as always, catching up with you and speaking to you. And uh, we're going to commence, uh, keep talking at our private session, but I want to say thank you to everyone who joined this live session. It is recorded and will go online so you can access it at, uh, at another stage as well. Actually, there is one uh, more question. How do I evolve from where I currently, uh, where I am currently from your point of view? This is Abed Khamis. Abed. Abed, little Abdullah. I think I know who this is. Um, I think in uh, in general, I think it's always important to uh, to uh, set goals for yourself, like know what you want from yourself, and then set small uh, small realizations that you can actually attend to. Um, and I, more than anything, I think. The most important thing is to be reading. You should always be reading something. Uh, and for that reading to be something that influences these decisions that you make in life. Yeah, absolutely. So we have a question from Cassia, which is with limited grassroots options for emerging artists, what advice for emerging curators would you give in terms of scouting for possible exhibition spaces? So thinking about the space. Great question. 
Yeah, it is an important question because I don't feel the answer is simply just institutions. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think, you know, my uh, case study uh, response for this is look at Beit 15. Beit 15, they came together because there was, there was no studio spaces. And then they extended that their downstairs space as an exhibition space. Um, and I think that we need more of that. And I think that, you know, the more you realize, you know, you, you, uh, like if you're scouting for, for young uh, 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 curators, shout out Danny, but outside of Danny, you know, a lot of artists have taken the role of curator. Uh, and I think that that's very interesting and it's very particular um, to us in the, in the current state. And I think that if you can collaborate with an artist and have the artist collaborate with you as artist curator, um, that would be very important and very interesting. And, and a thought that I always have and is something that is sort of cooking and brewing for, uh, for the new year for me is um, understanding alternative spaces and how we can utilize them. How can you kind of gorilla into these spaces and create exhibitions? Why we don't, we don't need formal spaces for, for exhibitions. Actually, informal spaces make exhibitions even more interesting. So I hope that answers your question, Cassie. We, we had another question, which is where can one start their curatorial journey after having worked in a couple of years in, in one particular field? Like what would the transition be? Um, I mean, I would start by saying that it's you know, it's finding the artists or the group of artists that, that you would like to work with and start small, but, but start well, actually, and best time and like the quality of thinking about their work, writing about their work and exhibiting. Absolutely. Revisit, uh, understand the artists. And, if, and this is the sort of the chicken or the egg situation for, for the curator is you start with the artists or do you start with the theme? And yeah. I think I'll leave you with that. Uh, once you decide between the two, really research them and then allow that uh, transition. Knowing your scene as well. Um, being involved in, in your scene is extremely important. Attending openings, exhibitions, understanding who's who. Absolutely. Okay, so we are going to end <laughs> this webinar, but thank you so much for this, Manira, and we'll catch you in the private session. And thank you to everybody else who attended. Thank you. Bye. Bye.